Just a brief moment to mention that this video is of course sponsored by Outplayed. This is a new app or recent app that is now being used by many, many people across the world for their gaming recordings. Now, not just to record and then edit and upload like you would normally do if you were a YouTuber, a Twitch streamer, or just in general using it as a hobby, but this is something that will capture your favorite moments automatically depending on the game. It will actually track what you're doing. So it will notice if you get headshots, kills, wins, losses or deaths, and it will actually automatically capture those moments so you can save them in a folder for later. Upload it straight to YouTube, Twitter, Discord, including individual specific channels for your convenience. Get the app today with a link down below and start recording your clips. Welcome back everyone. Today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to make your own one bar build based on five major points that you need to cover on your own setup. If you are trying to play any content, whether it be really, really easy or really, really difficult, even the vet hard mode stuff, dungeons, trials, arenas, all that kind of stuff, then you need some basic fundamentals for your build in order for them to be somewhat viable or function in those scenarios. Now, yes, of course, you could go with two bars and make it really complicated if you wanted to, or if you don't find it complicated, that's up to you. But if you are looking for one bar stuff, then that's probably why you press on this video. So what you need is to first of all understand that that thing there doesn't represent actual content that is a target you are doing nothing more than target practice on that if you want to make certain skills hit slightly harder based on the variables applied to that particular scenario fair enough you're going to get a result for that purpose but it's not going to reflect everyday content when you don't have those buffs and bonuses available, when your sets are not the same as the ones you were using on a dummy, which by the way, you shouldn't do, that's called Lion. And it's also not going to stand completely still. Your position, the enemy's position is going to change. So you need to be prepared for that. And what you need to understand is that when you do have a one bar build, and by the one bar build, I mean you're utilizing this particular ring where you cannot physically swap bars, you need to understand the difference between what you're gaining and what you're losing. So, yes, we've got Minor Berserk, Courage, and Major Brutality, so uh, Sorcery, Prophecy, Savagery, Minor Force, Minor Protection, Major Resolve, Minor Mending, Fortitude, Intellect, Endurance, Heroism, Minor Slayer, Minor Aegis, and Empower. But you also lost five major skill slots. So that means that you can't utilize all 10 like you usually would. You can't utilize two ultimates like you normally would. Most people would put a stat-based ulti on the front, so you get increased weapon damage if you like. Maybe the Dawnbreaker from this Fighter's Guild abilities, where it gives you 3% extra weapon damage for being there, plus the uh, extra bonus for the ability going off in the first place. In the meantime, if they didn't want to ever fire it, they could just take advantage of the passives and put a Meteor on the back. Always fire the Meteor, never use the front. You can't do that. So you've got to make harsh choices when deciding how to create your setup with this particular playstyle. Now, again, there's going to be five major points that I'm going to go over. The first one is actually your basic survival. And this is something that people heavily overlook when they're making a build. Yes, they want to make it hit really high numbers on the dummy, but then they end up being a complete carpet in content. You need some form of basic survival. So this character is not even really created. He's just got a couple of skills on the bar. Wearing random armor. But if you look here, your spell resistance and your physical resistance. You need that to be decent. So around the 10k mark for most people is generally fine because they've possibly got buffs and bonuses from their group. They're taking Result, advantage of major. DPS, Shut up. Tens, target taking advantage of... <laughs> that, that feature is so helpful, but also so annoying. Uh, most time, if you're in a group, you might have minor resolve. You might have major resolve from somebody else. The only time you're going to get major is if there's a warden in the group, or there is one set that applies that. And the only time you're going to get minor is if someone's throwing out combat prayer or a couple of buffs that supply that. If they are not present, you cannot fit them on your back bar because it doesn't exist. Lucky for you, the ring comes with major resolve, but where do you get the minor from? You might want to bring that yourself. You might want to bring some basic resist in your setup to solidly push that number to a healthy amount rather than having it really really squishy that's your first port of call to make sure that you are not a complete carpet if you have some form of health or resistances or a combination of the two that you are happy with that you can work with in content without taking too much damage and outlast for a decent amount of time before you need a heal that will give you a good starting base for your character 
So for the Sorcerer, for example, we have um, Daedric Summoner. So we've got Bound Aegis. If you put that on your bar, you get Minor Resolve. You also have Major Resolve from the ring. So without using any skills to activate, you've got 18 and 17k. That's not including other bonuses you can get from sets and such. That's a really good start. Now, if you don't understand resistances, I do have a video about damage mitigation. Resistances are calculated at 1% for every 660 that you have, and it caps at 50%. So 33k, you're done. You don't need that many as a DPS necessarily, but if you have higher resistances, that's not a bad thing. But this is where you want to start first. Now, regardless of that, there are many different ways to do it. You want to thin it out as much as possible without slotting too many skills. Because remember, every single skill you slot is one slot you now have less. Before, you would have nine left now to choose what you want to do. Now you have four. So that becomes a problem. Now, this does kind of roll into passives. This is a very subjective point of view, obviously, because this is a sorcerer ability. But what I'm trying to underline here is that you can have skills that sit on your bar and you don't have to complicate things. You don't have to activate it. It can just sit there and do its job. This does have an active bonus if you apply it. We're not going to go into that. But this does also have a very passive bonus where you get maximum magicka all the time and minor resolve all the time. And you don't have to do anything. There's no bar swapping involved because you can't do it. But normally you would bar swap, put skills on, try and apply a resistance buff, try and apply this, this and this. Well, your ring and this skill combined covers that without you having to hurt yourself. Yes, of course, this is different for other classes. But other classes also do have their own passive bonuses. Any of these passives here you must pay attention to, especially your survival based ones, because just for slotting skills sometimes you get benefits. The Dragon Knight, for example, if you slot an, uh, a Draconic Power ability, you will gain health recovery. And you will also gain increased healing received if you have an active ability from that skill line currently running. So there are lots of different benefits that are different, but still offer some form of survival without you having to do too much work. Even the Templar. If you take advantage of rune focus and you depends which way you morph it because obviously one gives stamina and one gives magicka again it's one skill yes of course it does give you a resistance bonus that you've already got so you don't want to stack them but at the same time it does give you a heal and you get minor mending for standing inside of it which again is a passive take advantage of your passives because whatever you're using could benefit you small or large depending on the situation you're in now when it comes to guild skill lines as well it's very choice driven um scenario here we've obviously got mages guild abilities available um yes they would be quite helpful i could put one on there and that would give me increased maximum magicka is it a resistance or survival bonus no but it does give me a resource amount to increase my damage and i could potentially use that for more survival skills on top without pressing anything but then you slot into a double negative on this one because you've actually stacked prophecy twice and we don't need to because it's on the ring so you may choose to drop that and use a different major skill skill instead because then you can still take advantage of the passives which give you extra resources again it's not going to be as much as this flat out but that's where your choices lie do you double dip on a, a bonus that you already have which is not going to help you just for the sake of taking a flat bonus or do you use something else more active and take advantage of a bonus that is already there in your passives anyway it does vary from player to player what you would prefer but just bear in mind your flat passives are important and they are a huge part of your overall build. I know people like to get passives last and skills last. They just want to get all the gear in and level up really fast. Passives, although very small percentage-wise per stage towards your overall stats, do cover a large amount of your overall performance. Now, alongside of this, obviously, you've got your Undaunted stuff. You can use Damage Shields for your Essential Survival as well, which is going to be your next section here. Essential Survival is Damage Shields and Heals. Bone Shield, Stamina Cost and Damage Shield. You've got Necrotic Orb, which can be changed into uh, Energy Orb, which will then do um, healing. So you could take advantage of that for you and your friends. One or the other or both. But just bear in mind, if you use both, you are then stuck in a scenario where you're up to three skills in and you haven't even started your damage yet. So this is your trade-off. You have to decide how many essential or basic survival skills you add to your build before you start looking into the damage stuff. Now, this is just a, a very small example of what you could do. On the Sorcerer, of course, you have um, your essential survival skill is your crit surge, do damage, you get heals. And on top of that, for extra protection, you got a damage shield. So you can slot both of these. And even on the easy sort, I actually do. But then again, you're left with one or potentially two slots left for damage. 
you must make sure that you've got some essential survival, otherwise you are going to be a carpet. If you don't stack any healing skills at all, if you don't stack any self-survival buffing bonuses at all, then that is your choice, but you are then a massive risk to you and everybody else because you don't have your own survival and you are 100% relying on everybody else to do that for you. Most people that do that hit hard on the dummy, but they end up dead. I'm not saying completely nuke your DPS for the sake of survival, but I am saying try and find a balance. Now, this is the tricky part, and it does depend on your class. It's about deciding which ones you take. With the Sorcerer, it's a no-brainer. Crit Surge is overpowered as fuck, and it has been forever. I'm surprised it hasn't been altered. Please don't alter it. We love it. But on the Templar, you've got Breath of Life. You've got your Ritual Heals. On the Necromancy, you've got more Heal Over Time-based heals, and you've got your Ghost, which again takes up another slot. Then you've got um, the Dragon Blood or the uh, Burning Embers from the Dragon Knight, amongst other things. You've also got the Warden Heals, which is the, the Wind, the Polar Wind. And then when it comes to the Nightblade, of course, a lot of that is based on what you kill, but you do still have your own heal as well, especially if you take the Stealth Ability, but don't take the Invisibility more. So you've got lots of different variants to what you can choose per class in order to take advantage of their class skills. But then you've also got other areas as well. You've got your assault skill line where you could take Vigor, for example. With stat consolidation, meaning your highest resources, so weapon damage or spell damage, and your highest flat ones, so stamina or magicka, whichever two are the highest combined, this will scale off of. You still use stamina, but your flat offensive stats boost it. So you could even take advantage of stuff like this if you don't like your class abilities, for example. You might find that your heal for your class is lacking for your build, so you can take these instead. You've got other things around that you can use. Um, and again, this comes down to choice. It is entirely up to you, but I highly recommend that for your essential survival skills, you at least slot a heal. And if you're still squishy or you have room, put a damage shield on as well. Because you don't need five damage skills. If you have five damage skills, you are going to run out of resources because you're spamming too much and you are going to die because you have no survival. Now, the next section that I am going to get into, surprisingly, is actually the damage section. But this is very important to note that you will need to figure out the type of damage that you prefer. The type of damage I'm talking about is do you want something really spammy? Do you want something that is more channeled? Or do you want something that is a combination of damage over time and spams? Or any of the above. Damage over time is quite easy. You fire two abilities or one ability and you let it run its course. But what do you do in between? Generally speaking, you would fire a spammable. So an example of that would be, let's say, crit surge. And that can be removed for the time being for crushing shock. Ignore the numbers, it's irrelevant. But here is your damage over time. What do I do now? Well, usually you would throw in light attacks and a skill. So you can spam this, one after the other, after the other, after the other, until the wall runs out and then reapply it. That is an option. Or you can keep up a damage over time effect of your choice while channeling a heavy attack and just combine the two and keep them running consistently. That actually does work out a little better for you sometimes, regardless of damage output, because what you end up with is you end up with an extra skill slot. So if you're only using one damage over time, and you're utilizing heavy attacks or light attack spam, and if you prefer um, to fill the gap, that gives you an extra spot. More heals, more flat damage bonuses, Result, 5, whatever you like. 5,828.7 DPS, 30s, yes, target skeleton, humanoid. Thank you. I have no champion points. Nothing is set up. This is just skills. Now, what about if you wanted to put two spammables in? Well, you could, but now what you're risking is having no damage over time. So if you do this and you fire like this so you're doing spammables only and no damage over time you may hit really hard initially but what you'll find is there's no damage on the ground so when you do run around in in combat if you're not paying attention to still applying damage you'll find you're trying to get out of aoe's and everything there's no extra damage happening to the boss nothing is happening right now so it's about consistency in the face of the enemy never moving, sure, that could work out for you. Result, 10,850.7 DPS. Thank you. You're going to do two skeleton, things combined. You are going to have no DPS when you're not connecting with the target. And you are also going to run out of juice eventually, unless you build for incredible sustainability. That is coming later. So, 
again, if you have something like this, which is a bit more spammy and dot based, just hold them together. If you do have to run in and out of combat, for example, even if you're applying heavies and such, if you forget to fire for a minute, you're still doing damage. So it does vary over content, depending on the player, depending on what you prefer, depending on where you are, but damage over time running somewhere is generally more beneficial than not. Now, obviously, again, that's build specific, depends, depends on what else you're using. Now, this is gonna get really annoying, so I'm gonna turn her off, hold on. Uh, options, accessibility, shut up. Right, um, the next part, and this is for those of you that love watching really, really hyped up, glamorous dummy hump videos, which is fine, there's a marker for it, and don't quite understand what you're seeing. And then before you question it, you run off, make the build, and wonder why your DPS sucks during mechanics. Do you know why? It's the same example as I just showed you. I just showed you that damage over time under a target while running around is still damage. But spamming stuff and then stopping to spam and running around is not damage. Here's your problem. Range. If I heavy attack in the face of the enemy, I can reach. If I heavy attack at the back, I can reach. If I'm using an ability that has range, I can reach. Those at the back there, understanding this so far? Okay, good. Now, there are some sets in the game that require you to be within melee range. There are some that require you to use melee abilities. And there are some that require you to use light and heavy attacks specifically. So let's just say, for example, we've got a trial set here. We're going to go into medium and we are going to grab ourselves a set of Reliquin. This is probably one of my most favorite examples. And we're going to get a full set. Doesn't matter what else we're wearing. We are thrown together really, really quickly anyway. So it doesn't make a difference. So let's put this on. This set requires you to fire off light or heavy attacks at least once every five seconds in order to maintain its damage. And you'll see people hit that target dummy, stack and damage all day long. But here's your problem. So if I am now using a weapon that is not ranged, i.e. maybe this two-hander, a one-hander actually, cancel that. As you can see, the winds are firing. Remember, I'm on a one-bar build. Some people like to use dual wield and bows. Great. Some people like to use dual wield and two-hander. That's already a problem. Some people like to use melee all day long. I'm not saying you can't do that with a two bar, with a one-bar build, but I am saying that if you get out of combat into mechanics, good job doing DPS. Your winds just fell off. You cannot reach with a light attack to maintain that. And now you do not do any damage. And the same can be applied with other basic skills as well. If we say, for example, some dual wield abilities, we'll put on Flurry, because this is now our main spammable. We've still got a spammable, we're good. And we'll put on maybe a damage over time. So I've replaced two skills, damage over time and spammable, with a damage over time and a spammable. And in the meantime, I'll actually put my other weapon on so I can actually bloody use it. So here is the issue. This carries with me everywhere button that one which we can see close up does damage away doesn't reach fire see only when you're close so that's useless then you've got this stabby stabby or swingy swingy they changed it in mechanics mind out for the stupid oh no i can't actually do a bloody thing here that's a problem, and that is why I tell people when they are making a one-bar build to consider your distance in actual content. I'm not saying you have to stay at the back of the room, but I am saying you will have to move in and out of combat. Now, let's keep the same set on, but let's take advantage of a ranged weapon. With... We're not even going to put any ranged skills on, actually. We're just going to take advantage of the heavy attack. That's all. As simple as this. This requires light attacks and heavy attacks to maintain it, as you can see. 
melee range, stacking up the winds. Move backwards. I can still reach. I can still reach. I can still reach. Or I can heavy attack and I can still reach. If you're using range skills, they will still reach. This is something you cannot do with a melee setup. So for content, that may be difficult. Dungeons, trials, arenas, or whatever. If you find yourself in a range position a lot of the time, especially when kiting stuff or moving out of stuff, you are rendered useless with melee weapons only. There are some exceptions to that. So the dual wield skill line does have a hidden blade, which you can throw. That is a little different. But again, you are still lacking the ability to light attack or heavy attack from range, meaning sets like that will not fire. So what I would encourage you to do, not saying you have to, but what I would encourage you to do is decide which range weapon you like. You can stay as close to the target as you want. But when you do go backwards, you will always maintain that damage upkeep. Ice stuff, lightning stuff, inferno stuff, even a bow. It doesn't matter as long as you can reach. And that is fundamentally the issue. If you can't reach, you can't do damage. So we'll put some bow skills on here. They'll be very basic um, here. So we'll have the usual snipe, which is your spammable. And we'll keep up endless hail, which is your damage over time on the ground. So if I do this... I can reach all day long. None of my sets fall off. Constantly applying damage. If I get closer, yes, your passives are slightly different. You do less damage up close, but you can still apply it. And if you have to heavy, you can still heavy. You can still focus on mechanics while not missing your target. That could be applied to two-bar builds as well, but not so strictly. What I would recommend on two-bar builds is at least having one weapon of range so you can still maintain some form of damage in a fight. So that is very, very important. Choose your range, pay attention to your sets that you're applying, and make sure that you can apply them both. It's no good going up to this dummy and putting Pillar of Nern and Reliquin on with dual wield on a one-bar build if when you go in content, you can't bloody reach. Especially if you don't have a gap closer. So we're going to go over the basics again. Basic survival, first of all, when making your build. Have some form of bonus from passives or skills from your class or guild lines in order to increase your survival flat out. It could be resistances. It could be some form of uh, minor bonus. Whatever it is, add that to your build. Or if you don't have access to that whatsoever for your class or from any other skill line, even an armor skill line, then of course pay attention to your passives at least and try and put something on that will increase your damage. That's your only other option. Now, essential survival, make sure you've at least got a heal. And if you need more, put on a damage shield as well. And then finally your damage output. Thin it out. Less is more. Putting five damage skills on a one bar build is a dead player. Make sure that you can apply a couple of skills indefinitely. Never run out of resources if you can help it. And then lessen the complication of the overall outcome of the build. Don't make it too complex. You've already decided you want one bar. So why make it more difficult for you if you can't swap bars or use two bars? And again, range. If you can't reach, you can't damage. That's very, very important. Be as harsh with yourself as you have to be when it comes to that. Don't sit there and mindlessly assume that that dummy means everything. Because be realistic and understand that in situations that are combat-based, in-game, you will move around. Now, the final one is sustainability. Can you sustain... Stop using it as a verb. I know. Can you sustain indefinitely in a fight? Can you maintain your resources? And this is the trickiest one. So people fail to understand that if you drive a car for 400 miles and you run out of juice... You're empty now. It's no good now finding somewhere and filling up. That's a chore. If you fill up halfway, then you can go further because you can constantly top it up. Now, lots of people get really, really low on resources and then do this. Spoiler, you're not doing any of your damage anymore. You are just heavy attacking with a heavy attack. Does that do damage? Yes, it's quite nice actually. But is that your overall build? No, because your overall build should look like this. And when you are in between your rotations, maybe you want to weave in a heavy or so when things go off balance, which they will in combat as long as people are bringing buffs and bonuses. It's about maintaining what you are already doing and making sure you keep up your pot. Fill it up 
occasionally, not just when you run out. If you do that, you'll be more successful in sustaining that bar that you are utilizing overall. As you can see, I'm utilizing the stand bar mostly on this particular spam. It's running low, but never let it run out. If it goes that low, it's too low. Weave in some heavies. You will get more resources back than you can count, and it will be really easy to maintain. Now, if your build doesn't allow for that, if you cannot keep up your resources, bear in mind, by the way, I'm not built for stamina at all. This is just a character with loads of magicka on it, and that's pretty much it. Doesn't have any stamina recovery apart from on his passives and his set. If you cannot maintain that, and you cannot track your bar enough to go, do you know what? Maybe I need to put a heavy attack in here somewhere. Then you are going to have to sacrifice some damage for recovery. And the way to do that is to either have sets with a recovery bonus on them. Maybe you have to stack a few. Or you can mess with your glyphs and your food. Just bear in mind, most recovery food doesn't tend to have lots of health on it. Um, and a flat resource at the same time. There are some try stat stuff um, that does give you benefits. But they'll never give you more benefits than a flat um, health and stamina. Or a flat magicka and stamina. The choice is yours. You can find recovery in the game. It's just a case of, are you a lazy spammer? Or can you maintain it? If you can maintain it, you'll get more damage out because you can go more flat. If you can't maintain it, you'll get less damage, but you can spam all day. Again, the choice is yours. So it's about survivability, basic. How tough are you to hit? Survivability, essential. Can you heal and shield if you need to? Damage, what skills should you use? Generally speaking, have some damage over time in there. And even if it's just a heavy attack or a spammable, use that as a layer on top of it. Range, have some range. Have a weapon that can reach far and close. And finally, again, sustainability. Make sure you manage your resources via heavy attacks in between your rotations, which are now less complex because you have less skills, or add more recovery. All of those combined will make everyday content a breeze for you because you now have more flat bonuses from that one ring and it covers your missing slots. But if you try and fill them all with damage, you're gonna suffer. And again, one more thing that is very, very important, because you have Empower on tap, that heavy attack I just taught you about as to how to maintain your resources during combat. If the target is off balance, look there, buffs on the left-hand side. Blue one with the stars around somebody's head. 72, 75K hit there from a heavy attack. And that is not built for stamina or heavy attacks or anything. Empower and off balance combined is disgusting. Empower will give you 80% increase to your heavy attack and off balance will give you a 70% increase to your heavy attack, and yes, they stack. If you are using a one bar build, I highly, highly recommend these two most important things. Out of anything you got out of this video, the two most important things. Utilize heavy attacks and make sure that you have something that you can reach with. If you do that, this kind of stuff, all day long. Easy peasy. At the moment, this, this stupidly thrown together setup, which has no real damage output whatsoever, is still just keeping up two skills with a heavy attack and managing almost 40k without trying. Just spam a little bit. Easy peasy. This is a Magicka build, technically. We've got 31k Magicka and 17k Stam. Now imagine what would happen if I actually built that four damage. And I mean... Taking advantage of weapon damage on all this stuff, increasing it, and actually having proper sets that consolidate together or, or actually work together. You see where we're going with this. So, as vague as it may be, hopefully you got something out of this video. Survival, maneuverability, range, damage, all those choices need to be made and they need to be harsh ones. You can't fit it all. Decide what works for you and go from there. Hopefully that helps. There is a new one bar build coming very, very soon, by the way. It's actually a Necromancer. So that is a little more advanced, actually, because some of those skills are, damn, I want to use them all, but I can't. But keep your eyes peeled. You will see that very, very soon. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. I hugely appreciate the support. If you are not subscribing on YouTube already, please do hit that button. It is free. Furthermore, if you want to help support outside the channel, there are some links in the info section for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, the website zonogaming.com with loads and loads of guides on there, including ultimate zone guides for just about everything in AD and EP at the moment, including DLCs, and DC should be done just before Christmas. Anyway, get cracking, make your own builds, tell me what you think in the comment section below, tell me what you learned, tell me what was helpful for you, tell me what wasn't. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.